Hello and welcome, my name is Chris Spiegel and today I want to talk about especially this little guy here. It is a capture card for HDMI capture to USB and it's basically a direct competitor to the Camlink 4K that Elgato makes and uh, I wanted to test these two mainly because there are two very, very distinct differences. One being that the Camlink is way more expensive than this guy and actually pretty much 10 times or almost 10 times as expensive. And the other thing is that this one here actually supports USB 2.0 capture or USB 2.0 interfaces, whereas the Elgato Camlink only supports the 3.0 and upward. However, of course, there are also drawbacks to the cheaper version right here, but it is really, really crazy how much you can pack into a little device like this and like this, but this one right here being just 15 US dollars, uh, I think we got it for something like 14 euros. And there's a version that is a 3.0, which at the time of the purchase of this one would have cost even less than that. But I was specifically looking for a USB 2.0 version. So this actually came in really, really handy. And that it is doing what I am expecting it to do is quite marvelous. Now, on the other hand, I purchased the Camlink a couple of years ago now, and it is a great capture card, and I don't want to discount it in any way because there are very obvious reasons to also choose this one. But at the time when I bought it, it was $129 or euros at the time, probably. Um, but let's talk about the specs and why this is such a crazy little tool that you might want to pick up if you want to do any kind of live streaming or work in that area, or even if you just want to use a computer as your external monitor, because for 15 bucks and the HDMI cable, this is actually crazy, crazy cheap. Now, of course, there are different solutions for using better cameras as your webcam when doing live streams. And you don't necessarily need an HDMI capture card anymore because pretty much all camera manufacturers actually now make some kind of software that you can use your camera as a webcam already. And I made a video about specifically the tool that Canon provides for us. And it is okay but it's lacking in a couple of different ways. Mainly those reasons are resolution, where it's less than full HD when you use those USB versions, or at least the one from Canon that I've tested. And also it is not capable of capturing sound. Now this may change with future versions of the software. This may also change with future versions of the cameras. However, at the time of when I made the video about the capture program from Canon, the webcam utility, it is not possible and you have to use a different source for your audio. And that comes with a little bit of a problem because of course, then you also have to synchronize the audio to the video source, which with an HDMI capture card, you don't really have to do. And that is already a huge plus for me at least to be able to connect my audio source directly to the camera and from there send one signal to the computer and use that as my whole setup basically. Now, this may not be very interesting for some people because if you are doing live streams, you can, of course, always use better microphones and more bigger setups with capture cards for the audio specifically. But if you want to have a small compact setup, that can be really, really crucial. And the one specific use case that we get out of this little guy with the USB 2.0 connection is actually with exactly that, a very, very simple live streaming setup for my partner who's doing yoga classes online and also live streams those on YouTube. Now, what she had was a 10 year old computer and I have a huge camera. She also has the wireless go, which is the microphone set that she wanted to use. And we experimented with all kinds of setups. Sometimes we used my computer and the cam link, but that wasn't really working for us because then it mean, meant that all the time when she was live streaming, I couldn't use my computer. So we had to find a different solution. The issue was that her computer didn't have enough horsepower to power the cam link specifically the USB connection. And even though the Camlink does some things really, really well, it doesn't work with an old computer like that. However, a USB 2.0 connection and this one, it did actually work quite nicely. We had an intermediate step where we were using the Canon webcam utility and it worked kind of okay. However, that brought up the problem of how did we get the audio from the wireless go into the computer, the internal 
uh, audio interface wasn't really that nice. It was very, very noisy. So then I used an external audio recorder as an audio interface and connected that via USB. It worked, but it was much more clumsy than necessary. Now we use the Canon EOS R as the camera, a HDMI cable to this little HDMI con uh, capture card, and it works quite nicely. Now let's talk about the differences between the Camlink and the no-name video capture device. And I will try to link it in the description below, but uh, it's just not really possible to name that very distinctly because it is under all kinds of different names in all kinds of different countries. You may find it under a different name or brand in the US than I do in Germany. So please be aware of that. Now, the first thing that you may notice when you unpack the two things is that the no name actually has pretty much no name, no branding, no real nice packaging. It just comes in a little plastic bag with a little flyer, which funny enough actually has instructions for OBS, including screenshots of OBS. And it also has a couple of the technical details of this capture card. On the other hand, the Camlink actually comes with not much nicer packaging. It has its own little box. Now, about more the technical side of things. The Camlink 4K, it actually comes in the name. It also supports 4K recording up to 30 frames per second. And I actually have tested that and I will include a little side by side in different quality levels as well here in the video. Now, the Camlink 4K supports 4K capture, but it also supports all kinds of different resolutions that your camera can send. So 4K 30 is, as far as I remember, the maximum that the Camlink 4K can go. But even if you set your settings lower, for example, 1080p at 24 frames per second, or even 1080p at 60 frames a second, the Camlink can actually capture that. One cavity though, for me, looking into the settings of OBS, I can't really decide after the fact what I would like to capture. So the Camlink only ever provides me with exactly the settings that I set with my camera as the HDMI output. So if I set 4K, then the capture card also captures 4K. If I set 4K 30, it captures 4K 30. And if I set it at 1080p 60, it only gives me that one option. That's actually a little different to the no-name brand little capture card that I have here because there I actually get to choose on the computer what I would like to capture. And I think that's actually a helpful feature, especially for example with the Canon EOS R, which basically only outputs either 60 FPS in 1080p or 24 FPS. With this, you can actually also choose 30 FPS. Now there's of course some kind of calculation going on there to reduce the frame rate between those steps and either miss frames and just leave them out or do some other kind of magic. I'm not sure what is actually happening there, but it gives me the option, as you can see on the screenshot on the screen right now, it also gives me the option to choose between different kinds of resolutions, which is actually really handy if you don't want to, for example, work with the 1080p webcam inter uh, feed or something like that. However, this device maxes out as 1080p. Now, you can actually give it a 4K signal. However, the maximum that you will get inside of OBS for recording is actually just a 1080p signal. And you can, of course, step it down from there. You can choose lower qualities, but you can't go over 1080p. And you also cannot capture 1080p at 60 frames per second because it maxes it out at 30 frames per second. However, those are all details in the spec sheet. That's what I expected. And it's actually not something that I complain about because it is quite enough for pretty much 99% of the use cases that I know of for this type of device. Now on the screen right now, you can see a couple test recordings that I did to compare these devices. You have the Atomos Ninja V, kind of the base recording or the comparison recording, recording into a ProRes file. Of course, that's kind of unfair to the other two devices. And then we have the no name brand and the Camlink, of course, always trying to match the same resolutions. However, I'm also including the 4K Max that the Camlink provides as well as the Max of 1080p even though it's a 4K signal on the no-name brand. You can see for yourself how the difference between those devices is. What I found was that the no-name device actually captures everything a little softer than the Camlink. And of course, both are not a comparison to the recording of the Atomos Ninja V in ProRes at all. Just to have a complete picture, the settings that I used in OBS are 100,000 kilobits per second or 100 megabytes per second as a recording. And of course, that would not be something that you use for live streaming. There, you would use something like five megabits or similar. 
Okay, so wrapping things up, why am I talking about this device? The main reason is because I made videos about the Camlink 4K in the past, and at this stage, I honestly cannot really recommend the Camlink 4K to the majority of people that are reaching out to me having questions about it. And that has a lot to do with the fact that the HDMI capture card, which I have right here, which is a metal build compared to a plastic build on the Camlink, is actually just about 10 times cheaper almost 10 times cheaper than the cam link. And for what you get, that is absolutely incredible. Of course, it doesn't do 4K in 30 FPS or 4K in 60 FPS. It doesn't do HDR mode or any of the new kind of fancy features that other capture cards support. However, what it does give you is a very simple interface. It gives you a lot of choices in the backend of OBS in terms of what you want to capture, how you want to capture it, and it gives you enough of a boost in terms of quality comparing to a webcam when using any kind of DSLR or mirrorless camera with this little device. And for $15 or sometimes even cheaper, and in some countries it may vary a little bit, but under $50, that is just mind blowing to me. Overall, I can absolutely recommend this device right here to anyone who wants to start live streaming, get their feet wet, improve their webcam quality, even just by starting to use a much bigger camera, much bigger sensor and such things. And of course, improve their webcam quality for Zoom calls, webinars, and similar online conferences, especially during these social distancing times. Now, my mind's still blown that for 15 bucks and a metal build, you can get a device like this, which captures up to a 4K signal into OBS and outputs a 1080p recording onto there. Uh, I just can't wrap my head around it, how they do it. It is here, it's here to stay. And I think that Elgato really has to step up their game to be able to compete in that range and also make something available for people in that area. Of course, if you want and have the absolute utmost highest quality, then there are really, really good capture cards from other manufacturers. And maybe even the feature set of the Ada Mini is something that you want to look at. However, again, for the vast majority of people, 99, maybe 95% of people, this device is absolutely enough. Now, I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please leave it a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and also on other topics. If you have any questions about the device or also the Camlink 4K, please leave them in the comments down below and I will try to answer them there or make individual videos about those to answer. Now, have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.